Welcome and welcome back to Maison de Chatillon. My name is Michaela. In today's video, I'm going to do a little Bellstaff jacket collection haul to show you. I have been collecting Bellstaff jackets for a little bit now and I have enough, I feel, that I can finally do a video for you to show you some of their really different unique styles. A little background on Bellstaff. If you don't know, they were originated in England, London specifically, in 1924 by Eli Abelovich and his son-in-law, Harry Grossberg. They originated as a motorcycle gear company and from then I think they've really just expanded into a luxury lifestyle brand. Currently, if you visit their website, you'll notice a lot of luxury sportswear and why that is all well and good. I am partial to their 2012-2013 era, the Rebel Aristocrat era, as some people have lovingly deemed it. And the reason why is because it was just such a wonderful combination of rugged coolness and classic elegance. And if you're going to be getting a leather jacket or a wax cotton jacket, something resilient, something well-made, Bellstaff is where you want to look, trust me. In the early 40s, Bellstaff created the Black Prince motorcycle jacket, which actually became one of the best-selling waterproof jackets of all time. And honestly, a lot of celebrities, not all, right, because Bellstaff is not a very loud-spoken luxury brand, but a lot of celebrities you will see wearing a Bellstaff jacket, and it's just kind of an understated cool thing. It's not like wearing a Louis Vuitton, Gucci logo t-shirt or something like that where it's very obvious what brand you're wearing a lot of people don't know about bell stuff so i think it's cool in that sense and it's kind of like a secret yeah it's kind of a secret and i'm letting you in on it now and honestly i think if you're going to be shopping for a leather jacket or something similar to that this is where you want to start generally their collection is catered towards men however they have a wonderful selection of women's jackets in fact many many options to choose from but i do have behind me here um, a lot of men's bell staff jackets as well of course i'm not going to be trying these on and showing you i'm just going to be showing you my collection but there's a couple that i have the feminine version of and i would love to kind of show you the comparison of the two but we're going to start with one of my absolute favorites and this is the bell staff roadmaster which is also my very first bell staff jacket Okay, this is it here. It has been worn, it has been loved, but that's the point. This jacket is extremely durable and really cool. And unlike their iconic uh, Trailmaster, this one has been discontinued. So I have a very special place in my heart for this jacket. And the fact that it does fit a bit slimmer is especially ideal if you're a female because it will give you that hourglass figure, that silhouette that just screams femininity and fitness, so we love that. I turn on a little bit more light so you can see this a little better because you have to see it. So here we have the belt that really tapers it in a bit here. This I like to wear actually rolled down always the zipper, which by the way, Bell Staff zippers are like extreme hardware, okay? By extreme, I mean they're sturdy, they are sticky when you first get them. You have to break them in, just like the jacket itself. When I first got this Roadmaster, I was shocked at how difficult it was to move my arms. It was extremely stiff, but that is actually a good thing. The fact that I had to break it in means that it will end up fitting to my specific form really well, which is exactly what we want. It's my jacket and it feels like my jacket. The inside does have this stunning pattern. It's kind of one of their signatures, but no doubt the most iconic thing about these jackets is their logo, the Rising Phoenix. This will always be located as a patch or um, just an emblem or a stamp in of this on the left arm, yeah. And this is just how you know it's a bell staff. Without being too loud, without being too, you know, in your face logo. The next beauty I have here is the bell staff gangster jacket in cognac leather. And this one I do have a men's version and I will show you it here. So obviously it's going to be much bigger for men. Um, but yeah, depending on your size, this is the exact same one. And I'll show you a little bit of a close up as it's easier here while I'm holding it, but the back has this gorgeous stitching. It is just a heavy jacket. It's high quality. Everything from the buttons, hardware, the logo, and of course the gorgeous interior fabric. And then we have here the stamp of unique finishing treatment. This is a hand waxed leather, very high quality, very luxurious. I'll show you it on. As you can see, this one fits 
a little wider and that's the point this is a very structured kind of a classic way for a leather jacket to fit the side of this jacket has these little zippers where you can kind of flare it out a bit it doesn't open it but it does widen it and i think that's really nice if you're wanting a more hourglass look or if you want it a little more boxy but i have to say if you're going to get a bell staff jacket after watching this video because you fall in love thanks to me you're welcome bell staff this is the one i think you may want to start with and here's why it's the most versatile i would say it's the most closest to what someone envisions when they want a leather jacket um, it's not too tight it's not too fitted it gives you a really just cool look very casual but also expensive looking. For my next beauty, I have the Bell Staff Molson Blusson. This is made out of a very lightweight Nappa leather and it adds fluidity and movement. It does not have that iconic pattern on the inside, but that doesn't change how absolutely exquisite this feels. This leather is the softest leather I have ever felt on clothing in my life. I am obsessed with this and I'm going to show you it on. This is definitely my second favorite jacket. And the reason why is because if I'm dressing up and I want to just add a little bit of a cool edge to my outfit, like if I'm wearing a dress or a skirt, I think this one is a perfect piece as it's fitted. So it doesn't ruin your outfit with a bunch of bulkiness, especially if you're wearing a dress or a skirt. You can actually button the top here or leave it open. I just kind of like leaving it open. I like that look. As you can see, this is very fitted. What this look really signifies is that classic cafe racer style. You understand what I'm saying? The classic cafe racer style, which is just cool, rugged, smart. What can I say? This is just one of the best out there. I already tossed the hanger, but <laughs> this is another Mollison Blusson. This material is actually kind of like a suede material. This one is also the Moto Cafe racer style inspired by the 1960s. It's less obvious that it's a leather jacket and it does give you that same gorgeous fit as the last one I just showed you. So exactly to your body shape. Very cool. And I do like to pair this with a pair of light colored pants if possible, trousers, whatever, jeans. And ladies, when you wear a combination of the light on light, I don't know what it is, but men seem to really like it. So just a little side note tip. This next one is definitely a winter coat. This is 100% shearling and this is called the Silver Lake. It is also inspired by that 1960s cafe racer look. Obviously there's a theme going here and you can see just the absolute quality. This will keep you warm. In fact, trying it on right now, I already know it's gonna be so warm for a second, but that's okay. This one I must confess, I got it a couple of winters ago and I just didn't have many opportunities to wear it. So it is still extremely stiff and that's fine. But keep in mind, once you break it in, it does look a little better on. But yeah, here we go. This will add a little bit of bulk to your look, ladies and gentlemen. So know that. And it kind of reminds me of this one. This is obviously a men's and it is obviously different. You know, this has the entire warm collar going here. But it definitely reminds me as this one is also lined with a shearling and it is very warm. I love the big collar and I do think this balances out the bulkiness of the jacket and it just gives you a little more like cleverness to the fit but this one is just fine. I like it. I just need to wear it more for sure. If I knew I was going on an evening stroll in the winter, I would be wearing this, okay, because this will keep you warm and it's very comfortable. It really is minus the fact that I have not fully broken this in but you can kind of see not only is it really thickly lined with this shearling material that I was talking about but so yeah it makes it tight on your arms all as it is but yeah I've not broken it in and it will look better this coming winter when I wear it I just love this one though the number one thing that stands out to me is the fact that it's lined all of the lightness is lined by this dark buttery leather and that to me makes it a very attractive jacket i'm a big fan of proper contrast so this next one we have is not as much of a big deal as the other ones i've shown you no but this is the bell staff um i think it's pronounced odile Bosson, and this color is aubergine which i hope translates on the camera properly we do have the rising phoenix logo on the arm which of course 
We love to see that. That's what makes it a bell staff jacket. But it is a down jacket and it's water resistant. So this is definitely perfect for spring, autumn, or an early winter when you need something water resistant and warm, but not too much. Even though this may be a puffer jacket, what I like about this one compared to a lot of brands and a lot of puffer jackets out there, it is fitted. And that is what makes or breaks a puffer jacket in my opinion. Obviously, if you are in negative degree weather, you probably do not care about how you look or how the style of the warm coat you're wearing looks understandable. But if you can get away with it looking good, why wouldn't you want to? This is a very interesting color. I don't typically go for these kind of like purple tones, but it's a very special color. It's almost blending into my background, so I apologize, but we have to work with what we have here. You can wear it open, you can close it, obviously, if you want to be a little warmer. And no, it doesn't have a hood. Bring an umbrella, darling, bring an umbrella. You don't need the hood. I have here the grandest, the most exquisite Bell Stuff 1924 hoodie. Yeah, I had to get this one. Are hoodies schmuckler? Sure. But if you're gonna wear a hoodie, you gotta wear bell stuff. And by the way, I understand that the camera's probably flipped, so the logo's probably backwards. We'll survive. I had to turn off the light because I sacrificed my hairstyle to put this one on. That's fine. Bell stuff's cool. Hoodies are kind of knobbish, whatever. They're very casual, but if you are doing something sporty or going outside, why not have it in style? The one thing this lacks though, so can we call it a true bell stuff? I don't know. It doesn't have a phoenix, but we have the logo on the front, so it is giving off a little bit of that Gucci, Louis Vuitton, and Portens vibe, but that's okay. That's okay. Again, thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you all in my next video.